Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at an Eagle handheld battery operated blower. Customer complaint is that it doesn't run. You can see that uh, the battery is charged and it just doesn't want to run. So you can confirm the uh, battery voltage with the voltmeter. Customer said that he put the battery in one of his other Eagle products and it worked fine. And he put one of his other batteries in this blower and it still didn't work. Well, that's a pretty good way of testing whether or not the battery is the problem here. And uh, I'm just accepting that there is no issue with the battery. I'm not real familiar with these blowers, so I took the tube off to see if there was some kind of uh, safety switch or tube presence switch or something like that and there's not that would have been an easy fix it would be like the uh like the safety switch they put on a discharge chute of a lawnmower deck all right so we're going to pull all the screws out of this machine because we have to split the halves but this uh foot this base is kind of holding the two halves together so we got to pull these four screws out and this thing just pops off of here there we go and then we'll gently pry the two halves apart now there's going to be a sticker on the front that's going to hold us up a little bit it's kind of near where i'm at with the screwdriver now You'll hear it pop. Well, let's go. They don't just fall apart. So that sticker broke loose. You can see on the front here where it was. And uh, here's the sticker. That's uh, for the speed control dial. Now, once you open it up, you can certainly jump in here and start testing switches if you want. Um, this is going to be a warranty claim if we find a problem with it. Right there is a capacitor. Be aware of that on that little circuit board. But because this is a warranty claim, I really only have to divide this into like three major groups. Um, there's a battery, there's a control circuit, and there's the brushless motor. So I already know the battery's good. I'm going to test the motor, and if that's good, then it's going to be in the control circuit. And the reason uh, I do it that way is... The control circuit is one part. We'll look at that a little closer later. So first, if you want to test the motor, you can check for uh, resistance in the windings. Make sure you don't have an open circuit. And just run a uh, multimeter checking ohms or resistance between any two pair of wires. You should have, uh, it should not be an open circuit, and when you spin the motor, you should see fluctuation like this. So that, it passed that test. Now, here's something else you can do with a brushless motor. It'll spin free when none of the wires are connected. But if you connect any two of the wires, you're going to feel the motor um, spins a little harder. It feels kind of notchy when you spin it. Really kind of hard to show that, but it's not just spinning free. You feel, you feel kind of notches in there when you spin it. Pulses, maybe. If you hook all three of the wires together, it'll spin even harder. That's another sign that um, all the windings are good in the motor. 
So our next test is going to be, um, here we're confirming that there's no open circuit first. All right, we've done that again. But now we're going to switch the meter to AC. And we want to spin the motor at a consistent speed. And we're going to hook the leads up to any pair of wires. And with the meter on AC, we're going to spin that motor. You can figure out how you're going to do that on your own at a consistent speed. So here it's going to be full speed on my drill. And then you're going to look at the reading. So we got 2 volts AC here. Then you're going to connect to different pair of windings. And you're going to run the same speed with the drill, which I was doing full throttle. And you should get a similar reading. And we do. And you can do, you know, every combination of pairs here if you want. So we get two volts again. So we feel pretty good that this motor is good. And we know the battery is good. So that leaves the control circuit. And that control circuit has a hidden fuse on the control board. It's underneath this potting material or whatever you want to call this. You have to scrape the material away to access the fuse. And I'm just checking to see if the fuse is blown or not. So there my meter works, but across the fuse I get nothing. So that fuse did blow. It's not a fuse that you can replace. It's molded into the board. So, I have to replace this whole wiring harness as one part number. It makes it kind of easy. I don't have to test anything else. So, we sent off for our parts. And they came in. And here's our blower in a box. And we get to try and remember how everything went together. You know, it's not like uh, the blower was the last thing I worked on. A whole week went by, so there was a lot of repairs that happened. If you take pictures when you take things apart, you know, it might be easier for you to put them back together. I do that once in a while, but I also... Don't do it an awful lot. Just trying to remember how that goes together. So there's our part number for our wiring harness. And I mean, this thing is designed so each piece has got its own little special holder. There's that capacitor we were talking about. Might want to be careful handling that so you don't get zapped. There's little uh, slots in these support walls in the housing that the wire is pushed down into. And we're going to have a couple of switches and that dial for the speed control. You get your, your trigger switch and your boost switch and your speed control dial. So now it's just a matter of properly routing the wires getting everything tucked in here. Um, at this point right here, I was kind of thinking to myself, it would have been nice if I took some pictures. Now, obviously, I recorded the video of this, but that video was already at home on my computer. And here I'm at work. So we're just sorting things out here a little bit. 
This switch drops into place underneath this boost button. And once you figure out where it goes, this stuff lines up pretty decent. That's simple enough. Dropping some more wires down into one of those slots on the chassis. This switch has got a long lever on it. Just jam it in there. Here's our trigger lever. And a spring. I mean, it, it couldn't be simpler how that goes together. So you can see that that lever reaches up and hits that micro switch. That looks right. This dial for our speed control, it has its own slots that the circuit board fits into and there's a lot of extra wire on this particular harness so it's kind of got to be wound up a little bit jammed up behind the circuit board underneath our uh, brushless motor wiring so we put the actual dial on the shaft and then the dial fits in its own set of on slot kind of there there's our fan motor and just match the colors up on the wires brown to brown blue to blue yellow to yellow And uh, these wires are kind of bulky. You really need to work at tucking them into place. So that there's enough room to put the top half of the chassis on. And now we're just straightening out anything that we disturbed. So we can put the other half on here. Here we go. There are some rubber bushings. Make sure those are all in place. Final sanity check, looking at the wiring harnesses so we don't pinch anything. And we'll bolt it together. really didn't go to it didn't go together too bad here's our screws they're all the same that's kind of nice we'll get this uh, bolted together and we'll give it a test run see if it's gonna go and if it does then that's all I'm gonna have for you on the ego handheld battery powered blower wiring harness replacement thanks for watching later